The Sony a7 III has taken the photography world by storm. It packs a ton of features and coming in at under $2,000, at least in the US, it's a relatively affordable option. But as with every new camera, not everything is perfect. There are tons of reviews out there covering all the pros and cons of the camera, so I wanted to look at something different with this video. So here's something I came across that I thought was interesting. In March, DP Review posted a detailed look at the a7III's high ISO and dynamic range performance. And what struck me was this. If you shoot compressed draw, the camera drops to 12-bit sensor readout and continuous drive modes. This negatively impacts dynamic range, dropping 1.4 stops at base ISO and roughly one stop at ISO 640. So in plain English, that means you lose up to 1.4 stops of dynamic range when shooting in any continuous drive mode. Note that this only applies to compressed draw files, but that's probably what the majority of Sony users shoot anyway. For event photography, I happen to shoot quite a lot in uh, continuous mode, so I wanted to find out if this is something I should be concerned about. 1.4 stops is quite a bit, especially if I end up losing dynamic range in the highlights. Now, I don't know about you, but looking at those DP review charts didn't really give me a good idea of what to expect in a real-world scenario. I wanted to figure out if this is something I should be concerned about. So instead, I set up a camera on a tripod and took a bunch of test photos in quick succession, one in single shot mode and the other in continuous drive mode. I tested a variety of exposures in order to later push the exposure in Lightroom. Now please note that this is not in any way scientific, but it should just do the job to look at what the real world impact would be. The first shot was underexposed by a couple of stops at ISO 100 and then pushed five stops in Lightroom. Looking at the shadows here, you can indeed see a difference in shadow detail, but it's very slight. There's definitely some more noise in the continuous shooting mode photo, and deeper reviews figure of 1.4 stops sounds about right. Keep in mind though that this image is pushed five stops. So I overexposed this next shot quite a bit to check on the highlight recovery of both files. Bringing it way down in Lightroom, the highlight details look about the same on both shots. Now that's great news because I can deal with a bit of lost shadow dynamic range, but clipping highlights can just be nasty depending on what you're shooting. So next I repeated the same process at ISO 3200. The story is the same for the highlight dynamic range, pretty much no loss of detail. You can see a slight difference in the shadows though. DP Review says it's about 0.4 stops and that sounds about right looking at these samples. So there you have it, the a7 III does lose a bit of dynamic range when shooting uncompressed draw in continuous mode. Should you be concerned about this? Is it worth sticking to single shot mode or uncompressed draw just because of this? Probably not. If you're a landscape photographer, you're probably shooting on compressed draw anyway or using single shot mode. For sports and event photographers who tend to use their cameras in continuous mode, the impact on dynamic range is, in my opinion, too little to ever notice in most real world applications. Since most of the dynamic range is lost in the shadows, you're unlikely to ever notice the difference unless you do a real side by side comparison in an extreme scenario such as mine. And rather than getting a blown out sky, you'll just have slightly more noise in the shadows if you really push the files to the edge. The normal everyday scenarios, I can't see this becoming a problem for anyone. Now, if you're really obsessed with getting the best image quality possible, but don't have the storage for uncompressed file sizes, by all means, stick to single shot mode. However, missing even the one shot because you're not in continuous mode definitely wouldn't be worth the minor trade off in shadow noise. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.